Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and looks like it's another one of these days when another paper is announced about a comet potentially destroying an ancient culture. In this case, an American culture that existed approximately 1700 years ago and a culture that seemed to have vanished for one reason or another. And although in the past I have been sort of skeptical about these papers and these discoveries, I still wanted to discuss this, talk a little bit more about what they found and generally talk about the idea of these so-called air bolides creating a lot of destruction on the planet. But I guess let's start with the culture itself, that's sort of at the forefront of this paper. This is one of the less known pre-Columbian cultures known as the Hopewell culture. A culture that sort of existed pretty much all across North America and didn't represent a single society but was instead a collection of different families and different populations living together, connecting with each other through somewhat complex trade routes, sometimes referred to as the Hopewell exchange system. Although generally they seem to have shared the traditional and religious beliefs, with many of them congregating in the same region and celebrating the same events around the same time. But then, by the year 500 CE, the culture started to decline quite dramatically. There was a lot less building going on, there was definitely a lot less production and trading, with many of these individual families living in various regions, then suddenly disappearing and basically moving somewhere else. At least that was the initial assumption based on the early archaeological evidence, with a lot of initial explanations suggesting that it just became somewhat difficult for these smaller communities, smaller families, to live far apart from one another and successfully trade and basically successfully survive, especially as larger and larger cultures started to develop around them. Or I guess more specifically, as humans started to congregate into larger cities, it became sort of inefficient and somewhat dangerous to live in smaller communities in that particular region. So the explanation here was mostly related to how humans evolved and how cultures change. Some other explanations involved, for example, climate change or the change in the habitat, including potentially the migration of animals that used to be hunted by these communities, with all of this eventually leading to most of these families once again forming larger cities and moving to a different location. So that's kind of how the early archaeologists explained the demise of this particular culture that lasted for approximately 300 years. And by the way, if you'd like to learn more about the culture and the traditions of this culture, I'm leaving some of the links in the description below. But this recent paper decided to, I guess, take a different approach, a more extreme approach. They started to look at some of the samples and some of the deposits located in various sediments found in this region. And in this case, they looked at 11 different sites across the region in Ohio, finding an unusual connection in terms of the concentration of two particular elements iridium and platinum. And although platinum by itself can be explained through, for example, volcanism, when it comes with iridium, it sometimes implies that a lot of these elements could have come from an asteroid or some kind of an air bolide. With a typical air burst, many of which have been detected in the past, usually leaving behind relatively large amounts of both platinum and iridium, while also discovering several spherules that were enriched in both iron and silicates and a higher than usual concentration of various meteoritic fragments visible right here, with the radiocarbon dating suggesting that whatever happened here most likely happened between the year 252 and the year 383, or I guess at least 200 years before the final demise of this culture. And in this case, I guess the implication from the paper is that, well, there was an aerobolite and it most likely had a dramatic effect on this culture which eventually led to its demise most likely because of an extremely large explosion which potentially created a lot of fires and potentially created a lot of other damage that eventually led to the whole area becoming relatively inhospitable. Now, that's where I personally sort of disagree and a lot of scientists do as well, even though I do not disagree with the idea that air bolite might have happened in this area. For example, one of the pieces of evidence provided in the study is a somewhat unusually shaped earthwork or a structure produced by the culture that seems to imply it's shaped like a comet. But this is extremely circumstantial and on top of this does not mean that the culture in this case perished because of the comet. The ancient people here might have seen the comet and might have been inspired by it to produce something like this, or in reality this could be entirely different in its function and of course in its appearance. On top of this there's also a suggestion that some of the meteorite fragments were possibly integrated into a lot of jewelry and instruments used by these cultures, 
But the thing is, it doesn't mean that the culture is perished. And it also doesn't mean or is not proven that it came from this particular air bolide. The actual air bolides happen all the time. So in this case, the jewelry could be made from any meteorite that might have crashed on the planet during any time in history. They also mentioned that a lot of other tribes have a few stories, uh, local traditions, about some kind of a event that they describe as a serpent flying through the skies or some kind of a sky panther dropping rocks on the ground. And well, it does sound like maybe they've witnessed some kind of an air bolide or potentially even a comet, but once again, these events happen all the time. So in this particular case, this is very, very circumstantial and could be describing a lot of other things happening throughout the history. They also mentioned some of the early astronomers, or in this case astrologers, from ancient China that counted various comets throughout this period, discovering that at least 69 comets were observed between the year 220 and 589. Okay, well, 69 comets, first of all, is not a lot. Second of all, there's really no connection between comets and air bolides, at least normally there isn't. And third of all, we generally see comets every year, several times a year. And so 69 comets in 300 years is actually not a lot at all. So unfortunately, a lot of the evidence provided in the paper is just way too circumstantial to make the point they're trying to make. Destroying the culture with a cometary burst or some kind of an air bolide would require way more evidence. For example, an extremely large crater located in that particular area with a carbon dating suggesting that it happened around this time. Or something even more concrete, like the signs we see from the ancient Pompeii during the eruption of Vesuvius in the year 79, where there are actual signs of destruction of the entire city with the remnants of the citizens visible in the sediment. But unfortunately, the only piece of evidence provided in this case is a somewhat unusually shaped earthwork that might resemble a comet, but it doesn't resemble anything that an air bolide would produce, specifically an explosion resembling an actual atomic bomb. Comets, though, happen all the time, so it's not unusual for an ancient culture to try to depict it. And though the signs of this particular event seem to be visible in different areas across this particular region, it's still pretty clear that the culture has survived for at least 200 more years following this event. And so what we have here is basically a paper that finds something, in this case most likely signs of a relatively powerful air bolide, but the conclusion that the scientists tried to make in this paper unfortunately does not provide enough evidence. The cultural decline very likely did not happen because of this particular event, even though in theory it could have been pretty powerful. But it's also important to understand that these events do happen and seem to happen relatively frequently, possibly even more frequently than we initially assumed. And specifically, NASA has been tracking quite a lot of these events in the last 30 or so years and discovered many of them happening in the region where we would never see them otherwise, usually somewhere in the ocean or somewhere in a relatively remote location. And so studying the frequency of air bolides, or better even trying to predict when and where they happen, is extremely important to a lot of NASA studies. But we still know very little about them, and we cannot really just make a conjecture simply based on the circumstantial evidence, not truly understanding what might have happened to this culture and what might have happened because of this air bolide. Moreover, a lot of other studies that I've discussed previously have also made this somewhat erroneous conclusion connecting an air bolide to potentially a disappearing culture that could have actually disappeared for a completely different reason. One good example would be the video from last year that you can find in the description or somewhere right there that talked about the potential destruction of the iconic or biblical city that was sometimes referred to as Sodom and Gomorrah. But in this case, even though there were signs of potential air bolide, these air bolides, as I mentioned, happen quite frequently, and the chance of one happening in the region within approximately 300 to 400 years is not very low, it's actually relatively high. But whether it did destroy the city, that's of course not something we can prove yet. Nevertheless, do check out the video because there are some interesting points that are made there as well. And so in the end, that's essentially the conclusion. There might have been a pretty powerful air bolide happening in this area, possibly about 1700 years ago, and there could have been cultures and people living there, witnessing it and being inspired by it, and possibly even creating art and all sorts of jewelry to celebrate or to worship this event.
But this event was not the same as the one that killed the dinosaurs. It was much less powerful, very likely a lot less influential, it obviously did not leave behind a crater, and so because of this it's quite likely that it didn't really cause the culture to collapse, with the evidence presented in the paper just not really being very convincing. Especially because we know that it took approximately 200 years for this tradition to finally disappear, where you would really expect a more immediate result if this was a much more powerful, much more influential event that would end up destroying an entire culture. But I'm sure we'll learn more about this as more studies come out about this and as more scientists talk about this in some of the follow-ups. For now, I guess it's pretty interesting to learn this, but really mostly for the reasons of knowing how frequent these events are and how likely we are to see one, possibly near a major urban area, happening in the next few decades. Because obviously trying to prevent these would be extremely important and this is exactly what NASA has been doing for the past few decades. But for now, well, check out the paper in the description below, maybe subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.